Hi, YouTubers and wet shavers everywhere. It's SparkerGeorgeTune.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. What do you got this morning? Well, <laughs> as you can see from my mug, <laughs> I've got something different this morning. Hang on, a little bit of a backstory there. Let me get a sip. One minute. Mm. Yeah, that is terrific. Well, what we're using this morning is Joe uh, coffee from Trader Joe's. I like this a lot. It's a medium roast, 100% Arabica ground coffee, an exceptionally smooth cup of coffee. Joe from Trader Joe's. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, now what's up with the uh, the beer stein? Well, downtown Cleveland in the theater district, uh, there is a restaurant there called Hofbra House, the Cleveland Hofbra House. And there it is right there. And I was there about a week ago, Saturday, uh, with uh, family and friends. And uh, what a great time it is. Oh my gosh, absolutely fantastic. Well, let me tell you what the Hofbra House is. Uh, Hofbra House Cleveland is a German microbrewery, beer hall, restaurant, and beer garden that opened downtown in the theater district October 2014. Replicating the 400 plus year old Hofbra House in Munich, Germany, our mission is to bring Bavaria to you. Yeah, if you are ever in Cleveland, this is the place to go. It is absolutely fantastic. I had such a great time, and the food is absolutely fantastic, really. And on the way out, I got a beer stein. I thought, you know what, I'll put some coffee in there. Now, I didn't check to see if they had coffee mugs, so my next visit down there, I'm going to see if they have a coffee mug. But that's it right there, Hofbrau House Cleveland. And I thought, hey, why not <laughs> use it to drink coffee too? Absolutely. And why are we using Trader Joe's? Well, Aldi is a German-based company owned by the Albrecht family. And Aldi also owns Trader Joe's. So uh, <laughs> I guess I guess you could say that uh, my Trader Joe's coffee uh, this morning is a German coffee of sort. Yeah, <laughs> how about that? And I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. As we like to say in the show, a good hot coffee, a trusty mug. Let the caffeine go to work, gentlemen. Absolutely. Hang on one more sip. Hmm. That's a good cup of coffee, and <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not use this for a good tall cup of coffee? The Hofbra House, I guess it's a beer stein. Yeah, that's what it is. They they have they have some they have some beer steins that are even larger than this. This is a smaller one. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And hey, if you're taking me along on your morning commute, thanks very much for the lift. I really do appreciate that. If you're listening to the podcast this morning. Thanks so much for tuning that in. I really do appreciate that. Boy, we've got a great show for you this morning. But let me give you a little inside baseball what's going on. I am uh, recording this before the uh, Maggard meetup, and I'm going to be piecing it together. So I'm doing it little by little, day by day, so that I can kind of edit on the fly and get the majority of the Monday morning mailbag edited and completed before I travel on Saturday. It's going to be about a three-hour drive for me up to Adrian, Michigan, and then three hours back. So I'm going to go up to the uh, the meetup and uh, meet up with everybody. Looking forward to seeing everyone up there. And I'll have my uh, trusty camera phone with me, and I'll take some video and take some pictures and that sort of thing. And then when I get home, uh, hopefully the majority of the Monday mailbag uh, will be completed and edited, and I'll just take that footage and drop it right in, do my final edits, do my final rendering, upload, and then we're all set. So I don't have to uh, try to do everything at the last minute. I'm going to try to just do this little by little over a few days during the week. Uh, so you will see me probably have a different shirt on, <laughs> maybe use a different coffee mug, uh, you know, that sort of thing. So that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm kind of doing it on the fly. Uh, over a number of days uh, rather than do it in one sitting as I usually do. So I hope you understand because that way I can kind of streamline the process, you know, shoot some video, edit it together, and then the next day shoot some more video, edit it, and, you know, kind of get it all done and completed so I can, so I can enjoy myself on Saturday and I'm not rushing back to uh, Ohio to, uh, you know, edit the whole thing, which will take, um, uh, take, takes, a <laughs> takes a good amount of time. Uh, depending on how long the show is going to be and that sort of thing. So I hope you understand. So yeah, you'll probably see me in a different shirt and different different, different stages of uh, being shaved or unshaved. I know I need a head shave here and I might, <laughs> next time you see me, 
uh, I might have a head shave. My shave might, my head might be shaved. I might have a face shave, that sort of thing. But we'll talk about that as we go along. So, hey, great to see you this morning. Thanks so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. We got a great show. Hey, we got a great shave tip this morning. We got a couple of shave den visits of sorts. Uh, again, we're going to do a recap of the Maggard meetup. And uh, a reminder of the Ohio Wet Shave Meetup coming, coming up in September. Uh, we're also going to look at the eclipse one more time. Boy, we've got some great photos from some viewers out there. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, great refill comments. Uh, some new wet shave gear that we're going to be talking about. And uh, also uh, some uh, great questions and comments. And uh, yeah, so we're really looking. Oh, and also uh, David Kais in questions and comments is introducing us to a new shaving form online. So stay tuned for that. We'll, we'll share that with you. Uh, in the questions and comments section. So my thanks to David Kais for that. Really do appreciate it, David. Uh, so hey, that kind of that kind of sums up what we got going on this morning. So thanks so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me, or a mug of coffee, or a beer stein of coffee, <laughs> whatever you prefer. I really, really love getting together with you and talking all things traditional wet shave. So let's get the show kicked off like we do every week with a viewer morning shaving tip. Well, this morning shaving tip comes from viewer Mickey K. And Mickey writes, Good day, Mark. I hope your days are as booming as your lathers. I have a tip for anyone with a Phoenix shaving non-slip grip alum block. This is a simple and easy tip anyone can do at home. And I'll even go one more to say every wet shaver that regularly uses any sort of alum block should give this a try. I, like others, have occasionally experienced the non-slip band slipping off the block once it's wet, especially on the edges that are rounded. In order to negate this, I first squared off all the four outer edges by simply sanding it very lightly across a cheese grater. You can also use a sanding stone if you regularly sharpen your own straight razors, a butter or table knife, or even the cement driveway. <laughs> Mind the oil stains. Anything to simply square off the edges and rough them up. I then used household super glue to dot periodically the inside of the band and let it dry to also give it some rough texture. Super glue is a fantastic bonding agent for rubber and much cheaper than any silicone or epoxy glue you use for replacing shave knots. It takes seconds to dry before it's back on your alum block. The roughened texture of the newly sanded edges as well as the glue on the tight band make handling it a breeze. Whenever you replace your old block, simply repeat the sanding process and use the same band or add a few more drops on the new band. Your alum blocks will forever be so safe in your hands, the president would be jealous. Best wishes from down under, and I'm looking forward to seeing the solar eclipse on your channel if you get the chance to film it. Warmest regards, Mickey K. Hey, Mickey, that is a really great practical shaving tip because you know what? I did have that problem early on with the Phoenix Shaving Solid Alum Block. Now you can see it's worn down quite a bit. Here's, the, here's a new one right here. Here's a new uh, Alum Block for Phoenix Shaving. This is not the solid, this is the original here. And you can see that's, that's, that's quite large in this solid Alum Block that I've been using. <laughs> yeah, I've been using it a lot, right? But the point is, is that it does have this rounded front edge right here. You can see that, that rounded edge? And yeah, that's, boy, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to, Square that off. Next time I get one of these, I'm going to square it off, and that way the band won't uh, won't come off as easily. Plus the super glue tip. That's absolutely fantastic. So thank you very very much for a really practical shaving tip regarding Allen Block and keeping that no slip grip on there. Thank you so much, Mickey. I really do appreciate it. And to say thank you for you and only you, an original signed George sketch. So please email me your snail mail address to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com, and I will send this to you post haste. And if you out there would like an original signed George sketch, just send me a shaving tip. 
Send that shaving tip to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com. And if I use it here on the Monday morning shaving tip segment of the Monday morning mailbag, you too will receive right here an original signed George sketch. So Mickey, thanks again for a really great practical shaving tip involving the uh, use of a no-slip grip on an alum block and how to improve its grippiness and to keep it on there. Really, really terrific, terrific tip. Thanks again, Mickey. Really do appreciate it. Well, this morning we have a couple of shave den visits of sorts. Uh, the first visit is a combination of shaving tip and shave den visit, and it comes from viewer Marco Batelli. And he writes, good morning, Mark. As you suggested, I am sending you my little contribution today regarding shaving. After a hot shower and before moving on to lathering with soap and shaving brush, I lather my face with a simple bar of soap called Dove based on a moisturizing cream that can be purchased in supermarkets, which, in my humble opinion, makes the subsequent shave much smoother. I wish you a nice day. Marco, hey Marco, thanks very, very much for that. Uh, Dove soap to be used as a pre-shave wash, I guess, and also as a pre-shave lather. That's a fantastic tip. So there you go, folks. If you're uh, interested in trying some different pre-shave soaps, check out Dove. That's absolutely fantastic. Uh, he also adds here, P.S., I'd like to show you my little shaving corner in my bathroom. And he sent along a photo. It looks absolutely fantastic, Marco. Looks really, really neat and tidy. And you got a lot of great shaving gear there. My gosh. And you can see on the top shelf his shave soaps because he added here that he likes to uh, strictly use Sterling Ozark Mountain, Sterling Weekend in Malibu, and uh, Saponificio Veracino Cubebe. I think I pronounced that last word correctly. It's C-U-B-E-B-E, -E, Cubebe. I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, and uh, those are the three shave soaps that he prefers to use. And uh, an absolutely fantastic looking uh, shave den. So before we go any further, Marco, you too will receive... An original signed George sketch for that shaving tip. So thanks very much for sending it along. Really, really do appreciate it. Hey, you know the drill. Just send me your snail mail address. Email me your snail mail address to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com, and I will send this to you post haste. So thanks again, Marco, for a really great shaving tip and also a really nice visit of your shaving den. Thank you very, very much. Really do appreciate that. Uh, Jim from Northfield wrote, Hi Mark, this is the latest addition to my shave den from an antique mall in Medina, Ohio. Uh, the top picture is a travel kit that includes a razor case that has a Gillette old type razor in it. I included it in the next photo. It's located to the far left. The bottom photo includes several nice finds like the Simplex Bakelite Military Razor, New Old Stock, the Auto Strop Kit, and a super find, an ever-ready lather catcher in fantastic condition, top left in the photo. I got great pricing too. Oh, the vintage Gillette Super Blue Blade Dispenser is new old stock with a cellophane wrap and instructions. Antique stores and malls are the places to shop. Thanks, Jim. Wow, Jim, that's an absolutely fantastic, fantastic vintage find again. My gosh, you're batting a thousand. Thanks so much for sending those along and sharing it with all the viewers. Again, folks, there are some great vintage razors out there. You just have to be patient and you have to know where to look. Jim picked these up at an antique mall in Medina, Ohio on his travels. Absolutely fantastic, Jim. Thanks so much for sending it along and uh, a great, great look at some new additions to your shave den. So thanks very much to Marco and Jim from Northfield for sending along a great shaving tip and some great visits to uh, their shave dens. Thanks very much, gentlemen. Really do appreciate it. Well, here's your weekly reminder that the Monday Morning Mailbag is also available as a podcast. Simply get up to your favorite streaming service and search for Monday Morning Mailbag and more, and the Monday Morning Mailbag podcast, as well as our other podcast, Second Cup, will come right up. Both of those podcasts are available on Anchor, Spotify, 
Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, YouTube Music, and now, right here on YouTube. Well, we have some more really outstanding Eclipse photos from viewers out there. Uh, really, really terrific stuff. Really excited to show this to you. Uh, Josh Perkins, also known as Subi Shaves, you know his channel. Check him out. Subscribe to him. We'll have a link to his channel below. Josh sent along these photos, uh, and he wrote, Hey, Mark, sorry, our four-hour drive yesterday took 12 hours to get home. We spent 18 hours in the car, and... Uh, they were just getting up when he sent me these uh, these photos here that I'm showing you right now. Uh, and he said, our internet was absolutely garbage until today. So much usage caused outages everywhere. Uh, here are the photos I got. Took a bunch as the eclipse happened. And these are absolutely fantastic, fantastic photos, Josh. Thanks so much for sending these along. And yeah, I would think that... Uh, uh, the traffic was probably uh, pretty dense where you were and probably took a long time to get home because my brother Jim experienced that back in 2017 when he went to Western Kentucky to uh, see the eclipse there. And uh, it took him about 15 hours to, <laughs> to get out of that area, get home. And uh, yeah, it was quite a drive to get home, quite an ordeal. A lot of people moving into those areas to see the uh, total eclipse. But thank you so much for sending along some great shots. Uh, looks like you got together with family and friends, and that's absolutely wonderful. A great, great event for everyone. Thank you so much for sending these along. Really, really do appreciate it. Al Spencer <laughs> sent this along and said, uh, here's my shadow on the eclipse day. <laughs> Thanks very much for that, Al. Yeah, as I say, the, uh, the shadows had a really nice, uh, very, very fine, crisp edge to them uh, as the eclipse was uh, was starting. Really, 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 really neat. Really, really neat. Thanks very much for saying that along, Al. Really do appreciate it. Dan Blackshire sent along these photos and he wrote, Mark, I was in Carbondale, Illinois. We had an eagle fly right over us about two minutes before it went dark. The eagle was then joined by two other eagles and they began flying in circles in front of us. Incredible. We had a telescope with a protective filter. A lady who also had a really big zoom lens with a protective filter. Incredible. Blessings, Dan Blackster. Uh, Brandon, Mississippi. Wow. <laughs> Dan, these are absolutely incredible photos. Thank you so much for sending them along. And yeah, uh, having that telescope and uh, zoom cameras, zoom lenses with filters to see it must have been absolutely fantastic. That's, that's outstanding. And again, some really outstanding photos. Thank you so much for sending them along. And uh, Paul DeJardin wrote, he said, uh, glad to see you enjoyed the eclipse, Mark. Montreal, my town, was actually the largest populated city that the eclipse passed over in North America. We had 100% totality. Lots of smaller towns and cities got it too, but we were the largest. City did come to a stop. Traffic was crazy as folks were heading home from the show. Uh, another thing that people don't seem to talk about is the strange effects on colors. A very strange filtering effect took place as well. Can't wait for the next one in 21-something. <laughs> I think the next one's in 2045 here in North America, but it's in 2026 in Spain, as I recall. And yeah, the strange effects on colors, as I said uh, last week, as the eclipse was ending, as, as the moon started to move uh, away from the sun, out of the sun, uh, the, the, the light came back up and it was like a white light. And yeah, the colors were different. I mean, it was just, it was white. It was really, really something to see. Yeah, an absolutely fantastic event. And again, the next total eclipse that comes around, I think it's 2026, it's going to be in Spain. Oh my gosh, if, you, if you're able to get there and see it, wow, that would be fantastic. It really is an amazing, amazing event to see. And I'm so glad I saw it. And all I had to do was walk out my front door. That's what, that's what was so satisfying. It was just right there in my front yard. And I got to experience it with my neighbors. And it was really, really terrific. So I want to thank everyone for sending along the uh, photos. Uh, Josh Perkins, Subi Shaves. Check out his channel, Dan Blackshirt. Al Spencer. And also thanks to, for the commentary from Paul DeJardin up there in Montreal. Really do appreciate it, gentlemen. 
Thank you very much. Okay, save the date. Saturday, September 14th, 2024. That's the date of the 2024 Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at River's Edge Cutlery, 4601 Lyman Drive, Hilliard, Ohio, 43026. Once again, save the date for the Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup, Saturday, September 14th, 2024, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at River's Edge Cutlery. We'll have more information as the date draws closer. Well, I just got home from the Maggard meetup. What an absolutely fabulous time. And it was great meeting fellow wet shavers, artisans, and vendors there. Really, really, really terrific, terrific time. Well, we've got a highlight reel put together. Check it out. Well, here we are at 124 South Winter Street, Adrian, Michigan, home of Maggard Razors. A beautiful spring day, cool day, about 50 degrees. Perfect weather because that upstairs room can get kind of warm, but everything was really, really comfortable. Really, really terrific, terrific event. Let's check it out. Just stroll right on up to their front door. Let yourself in. And everyone was there to meet you, to greet. How are you? the meetup we had to check out the maggard razor store an absolutely spectacular display of everything wet shaving great razors shaving creams aftershaves shaving brushes you name it they've got it in the store if you miss the meetup make sure that whenever you're near adrian michigan stop in and visit the store it really is a treat and before we went upstairs to the meetup, we ran into some fellow wet shavers. Here I am with Bill Murphy at the Maggard Meetup. We're at the Maggard Meetup with Steve. Steve Maffey. Steve Maffey. How do you spell that? M A F F E Y. Maffey. Steve Maffey at the Maggard Meetup. And we're having a great time. Were you upstairs already? Uh, no, I just no, you're got just here. going upstairs? So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, 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 we're, well, we're headed upstairs. Let's check it out. Uh, okay, I'm here at the Maggard Meetup with Kevin Laird. Kevin, have you been upstairs? Oh, yeah. Have you? Good, a lot of stuff up there? Oh, tons. Yeah, tons. yeah. This is an absolutely fantastic event. If you get a chance to get here, well, next time they do it, absolutely make make it a point to get to the Maggard Meetup. It's really, absolutely. It's really good. Right one, here, Kevin's giving a great endorsement. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. It's one of the best meetups you will ever get to. Yeah, absolutely. Can't be beat. Absolutely. Thanks. Great seeing you, Kevin. You get to meet celebrities like Mark here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Kevin. Appreciate it. Now, this is what Maggard Razors posted on Facebook a few days before the meetup. This is the main room where the meetup took place. And as you can see, all the tables are set up. Everyone's name tags are laid out. Everything's all set to go. And when I went upstairs, I was greeted with this. <laughs> As you can see, it was jam-packed, a lot of attendees, everyone having a great time. Let's meet some of the attendees, some of the artisans, and some of the vendors. Maggard meet up with DJ, what's your last name? DJ Gurley. DJ Gurley, we're here having a good time. Have you checked out a lot of the tables? Oh yeah, already. A lot, a lot of good stuff. Oh, great stuff. Yeah, we'll get Carlos in there. Carlos, come on in. Hey, what's going on? How are you? Good, how buddy. Was, how, many, uh, many, how many tables have you, how many vendors? I've already hit them all once. I'm just waiting to quiet down so I can bother the vendors some more. Yeah, it's really jam-packed here. Yep. You've never been to the Maggard meetup. Gotta come. Here. You gotta, gotta go. Gotta go. Gotta Make go. sure you come. It's next to you. Yeah. We're here with Larry Napier at the Maggard Meetup. Larry, what part of the country did you come from? I'm from West Virginia. West Virginia. You're staying the weekend, obviously. Yes. And this is absolutely a fantastic yes. event. Yes. And have you have you been to a lot of the uh, artisan tables and seen some yeah, members? Yeah, I've been around. Yeah. yeah. And what, what's your favorite so far? What one would you recommend folks to drop in and see? That's tough. They're all so wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, absolutely fantastic. Um, I don't well, have my vibe name. That's, that's okay. That's okay. Well, 
Larry Napier <laughs> here at the Bankers Meetup. Thanks so much. I, I would recommend come and experience it yourself. Yeah, because it's amazing. Absolutely, it's amazing. absolutely. Okay, I'm here with uh, I'm here with Matt. Matt. What's your last name? Matt Rose. Matt Rose, all the way from Indiana. Is this your first time at the Maggard Meetup? Uh, yes, I've been to the Maggard store, but the first time at the Meetup. Well, and what do you think so far? Oh, having a great time. Having a great time. You've got to get here to the Maggard Meetup. Absolutely. Matt, thank you so very, very much. He listened to the podcast during his drive on the way up here. On the way up here. So that's very, I'm very, I'm very flattering. Thank yes, you I very did. Much. Okay, we're here with Philip Sharp of SharpShaver.com. If you want Boom to Beard products, check out his website, SharpShaver.com. That's correct. Is this your first time at the Maggard Meetup? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Where'd you come from? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Everyone from all over the country here at the Maggard Meetup. Philip Sharp, SharpShaver.com. If you're looking for Boom to Beard Shave products, check out SharpShaver.com. We'll have the link below. Philip, great to see you here. Me too, Mark. All right, very good. <laughs> okay, here I am with David Tice. Oh, David, where are you from? I'm from Ohio. From Ohio. Ohio. Another fellow Ohioan here yeah. at the Maggard Meetup. And have you had a chance to see all the artisans on some of the vendors here? Man? It's great. That PIF table was like... The, the, yeah, we have to check out the PIF table. The PIF picture of that. Yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> going to check that out, the PIF table. David Tice, we'll be talking about the cancer research fundraiser that he and his wife do later on September. this year September. in September. So we'll be talking about that. But uh, And also the new forum. Yes, uh, Shaving Card Day. Yeah, Shaving Card Day. We're going to be talking about that in the questions and comments section of today's Monday morning mailbag, so stay tuned for that. And this guy has the best Monday morning mailbag. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Great. David, great to see you. Thanks very, very much. Meg and Meetup, we're here with Tim and Adam. Hi. <laughs> Here with Grant. How's it going? The Maggard Meetup. Are you enjoying yourself? Yeah, having a great time. It's yeah. good this year. It's not as hot. Not as hot. <laughs> last year, yeah, last year was in the summertime. It was hot. This is the month of April, and it, the, it's much more agreeable upstairs. Yeah, it's great. Very, very, very great crowds nice. this year. Good to see yeah. you again, Mark. Right, and you're having a great time. Yeah. What, uh, what, what vendor or what artisan really stands out for you this year? I'm just glad to see that Ron's still here and still makes banana soap. Yeah, yeah. who is that? Uh, chiseled face. Chiseled face. It's, they're right behind us. Right behind us. Yep. Yeah, right over, right over there. I think is where they are. Yeah. All right. Okay. So if you can ever make it to the Maggard Meetup, plan to get here. It's a great, great time. Yep. The uh, Maggard Meetup with Angelo Amador from the Razor Company. We did a live shave together. He has a brand new shave YouTube shave channel called Shave RK. Yep. And check him out. We'll have a link to it below. And he also gave me a sticker with a logo and everything. So it's great to see him here. How do you like the uh, meetup so far? Oh, it's great. A lot of good people, much cooler than last year. <laughs> any, any standouts in the way of artisans and vendors and that sort of thing? Oh, everybody's been doing great, but uh, yeah. it was good to see Matt Fasarsic back. Yeah. Matt Fasarsic, yeah, we have yeah. to see him from Rex Supplies. Got to yeah. Makes then, a great razor, also offers some great shaving soap. Yeah. 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 Angela, great seeing you. Thanks yeah. very much. I'm here with James German at the Maggard Meetup, and you won a door prize. What'd you I win? A set of um, AL Don Jose. Very nice. Very, very nice. And of course, uh, you're getting you're getting things ready for the Ohio Wet Shape meetup in September. Yeah. And I brought trinkets. <laughs> uh -oh. Wait a minute, trinkets. Very nice. Um, well, what exactly are those? They've been called uh, Ohio Shape Meetup Coke Spoons. Oh, no. no. Will, if you try to free base with them, they will melt. It's for scooping shave soap. But they do glow in the dark, so yeah. you'll be able to find them. Yeah, so, it's, yeah. It's, it's a glow in the dark, a glow in the dark uh, shave scooper. So if you go to Ohio Wet Shave Meetup, you'll get one of these then. Absolutely. That's neat. That's neat. I'm looking forward to getting one of them. Sure, sure. Oh, I already got mine already, but I'm still going to be at the Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup in September, September 14th. 2024. Yep. Thank you, James German. Awesome. And this is your son. Yep, John. John. Okay. John. And John and Jim here at the old, at the Maggard Meetup. We're getting ready for the How Much Shape is Meetup coming up in September. Great to see you guys. Excellent. Right. Okay, we're here at the Maggard Meetup. We got Canadians in the house. We've got Tony and Diana. <laughs> here at the Maggard Meetup. Came all the way from Canada. You enjoying yourself? So awesome. Long? And you just want awesome to event events too. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, we're at the uh, we're at we're at the Maggard <laughs> Meetup with Avine Samant and his friend Chris, all the way down from Canada. That's right. Canadians who made the trip here. 
Are you having fun? Oh, Absolutely. Yeah, good kidding, time. kidding one better than Disney. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, which artists so far did you enjoy seeing and visiting? And one of the, who, who was the standout for you so far? Oh, it's got to be the ones who do the soap for. Um, for maggots, I forgot. Yep. I just bought a birch soap from them. It's oh, fantastic. Really? Yeah. Right here, hold it up to the camera. Oh, it's TTS. What is it? I think it's TT TTIC Birch Forest Apache from birch uh, Forest. from the uh, TTFFCrafts.com. So, okay, show that on. Show that. Turn that so we can see that. Right there. Yeah, that's it. Right there. Okay, great. And they're making. They're making. Shave soaps and splashes exclusively for Haggard Razor. That's right. That's great. And uh, Abane says it's a winner, so I check it out. Fantastic. And get to the Maggard meetup if you've never been here. It's an absolutely great. fantastic. Great. great to see Abane. And Thank you so much. Thank you. Best Thank you. You. show ever. And we caught up with Will from Barrister and Man. About, tell me about Eclipse Cologne. Eclipse Eau de Parfum, in fact. Okay. So it's, a, it's an inverted sheep run. I took patchouli and oak moss and labdanum and citrus and flipped it. So now the patchouli symbolizes the moon in front of the citrus, which is the sun. Ordinarily it'd be mostly citrus, now it's mostly patchouli. So what I did was I enriched the whole thing with various powders and resins, and you get this nice, warm, fuzzy, cozy, cozy kind of fragrance to symbol to uh, commemorate a special occasion. And how many of you? How many of these do you have? I have 28 left. I had 48 to start with, 4.8. Wow. So, and, and that's it. Only available at the Maggard Meetup. Anything that's left after today will go on our website on Tuesday, but that's it. No more will be made. Can we see the bottle, please? We sure can. It comes in the back. Okay, there it is right there. Now, oh, that's nice. And like I said, each one's individually numbered. And they come with little certificates signed by both Bob and myself. Wow, that is really, really nice. Wow. So if you're looking for a really special aftershave cologne, right here, Barrister and Man has it with Eclipse. And if any are left, they'll be on his website for sale. But you got to get to the Maggard Meetup because of special offerings like the one that we just saw right now. Correct. Thank you very, very much. Well, by the time I got over to the PIF table, everything had been pretty well picked over. But from what others were telling me, it was stocked with a lot of great wet shaving gear. We also had a visit with Zingari Man. I'm here with Heather from Zingari Man at the Maggard Meetup. She's got an awesome, awesome variety of shave soaps and aftershave splashes and also a couple of samples of one of her shave soaps which is one is magician the other one is called the brewer the brewer yep so, IPA. yeah so we're going to be looking at that on an upcoming monday morning mailbag talk about the scent profile and that sort of thing and great to see some very man here at the major meetup heather where are you where are you home based uh evansville indiana evansville indiana and yep. what is the website uh www.zingariman.com www.zingariman.com We'll have links below. Thanks very much, Heather. Thank you. We stopped by Holy Cause table to check out all the different soaps that he was offering, and wow, did he have a neat item. So this is the top. What is this now? This is this is from Holy Cause. This is a new shave container. That has got a, the lid, and there is a, there's an inner gasket, an inner inside. inside. Right. So this is how it looks. So it, it protects the soap. And then what you can do if you're traveling, you can pack a razor. This is fantastic. Three piece razor. And a tuck of blade. That is fantastic. That is fantastic. Snug. Look at that. That's fantastic. That's that is that's fantastic. Travel rate, travel friendly. Wow. From Holy Call. Yes, sir. 
An absolutely fantastic, fantastic. Now, does this this does not come with every shave soap? It's a special order. No, it's all with the shave soap. The new, the new any stuff. shave soap you have comes with this lid. The the new the new sense. The newest sense. Some of the older sense, they still are in the pack in the old top. Right. They don't have the insert, but the new ones they all come in this. Like this one is also like this. There's a side label. They're the same size. So there's a side label too. We've been talking with Sri Ram. Um, from Holy Caught, and he has this fantastic shave soap container. Not only not only with a great shave soap and a wonderful scent, but it's also great for travel, as he just showed you. Absolutely fantastic. You can put in your three-piece razor, some blades. Yep. Absolutely fantastic. And it doesn't rattle inside. Doesn't rattle, and you're good to go. It's good absolutely to go. fabulous, fabulous idea. Thank you, thank Shri you. Ram, thank you very, very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Get to the Maggard Meetup. You see great developments in the wet shaving world. Totally, totally. Absolutely. That's where you should, we all should come. All should meetup. come. Holy Car, and you have a website. Yes, sir. Holycar.com. Holycar.com, and where you can get this. Yeah. If you weren't here at the Maggard Meetup, you can get this online at holycar.com. Absolutely fantastic, fantastic idea. Thank Shri you, sir. Ram, thank you very, thank very much. Thank you so much. What? Shannon Soaps from North Olmsted, Ohio was also in attendance with a lot of great wet shaving items. Peter from Arion and Evans was also in attendance. We had a great conversation with Peter. He has got some great shaving creams that are going to be released here in about a week. Wonderful, wonderful stuff like the Equestrian and 60s Cologne and many, many others. Terrific, terrific stuff. Stay tuned for that. We're going to be featuring them on the Monday Morning Mailbag and also talking about them on Second Cup. So a big, big thank you to Peter from Ariana and Evans. And it was also absolutely wonderful and a real honor meeting Matt Pisarsik from Rex Supply Company. The Mackin Meetup with Matt Pisarsik all the way from Rex Supply, all the way from Arizona. He made it all the way to Michigan for us. He's giving out free t-shirts. If you missed this Mackin Meetup, you missed an awesome, awesome Rex Supply t-shirt. Absolutely free, 100%. He's here to represent the wet shaving community and to talk about how great doing the traditional wet shave is. If you need any information regarding vintage Gillette razors, this is the man we talked to, Matt. So great to see you. Yeah, no worries, Mark. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Happy to be here. Happy to be hanging out with you finally. This guy, he's the famous one. <laughs> now, Lex Supply is where I send everybody regarding a great laser. I have the Envoy. I also have the Council, which are both absolutely fantastic. The Ambassador's on my wish list. That's going to be my next laser I'm going to get. And if you want a great laser, get over to Rex Supply. They make some, they also offer some great shaving stuff, too, now, as a matter of fact. I have 1955. That's an absolute fantastic. That's a classic, yeah. It's a fantastic, fantastic set. So great to see Matt Sarsik from Rex Supply here at the Magnum Meetup. Matt, Matt, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Mark. An honor to meet you. And Matt also took a few moments to show us how to properly load a blade in a Rex Supply Council Slant adjustable razor. And the way to check is always the end cap to make sure that cap is seated onto the, the handle. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Jonathan from Henson Razor was also there, and Henson has some new products. Check it out. It's made of merino wool. What is it? Merino wool? Merino wool. So it absorbs uh, liquid really good and it's antibacterial. And, here's the bottom. and then it's got these straps on here, so you tighten it down. And then here in the back, it's a flat pack stand that then comes together like this. So when you're traveling, now you have a stand for the razor to let it drain out. Wow. Yeah. That's nice. It buttons up nice and tight. Well, that's beautiful. Yeah. That is really absolutely awesome. beautiful. Man, fun. You can get this is the regular handle that comes with it. You can get a shorter, you can get a longer, or you can get the stainless handle. If you want to add weight to your Hanson razor. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, the feel the difference between those two. And I'll add here that the case and the stainless steel handle are available on Amazon. All right, we're This is Jonathan from Henson Razors. Came all the way down from Canada at the Maggard Meetup. 
He has some absolutely beautiful offerings now. We just saw that beautiful razor case and also a stainless handle that's available on Amazon only, correct? It's available just on Amazon, and, yeah. And the, and the case is available where? On Amazon as well. Yep. Amazon. So two great offerings from Henson Razor on Amazon exclusively. Stainless steel handle and an absolutely beautiful, beautiful razor case. You got it. Great to see Jonathan from Henson Razor. see you, Mark. Razor. Absolutely great. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much. And it was great to see Rod and Mandy from Sterling Soap Company. They had a wonderful offering of T-shirts, coffee, dop kits, a lot of wet shave soap samples. All in all, a really, really terrific presentation. Okay, here we are at the Niagara Meetup with Rod and Mandy from Sterling Soap. They have an absolutely awesome table with coffee and shave soaps and samples and shirts and travel top kits and all kinds of great stuff and anything new happening at Sterling Soap right now new offerings what's on what's on the horizon right now what's on the horizon I'm hoping to be sending out testers of antiperspirant deodorant within the next month and then K K cups K cups oh gonna, for the coffee we've had so many people that won't try our coffee because they use K cups so we found a machine that will pump nitrogen in there instead of regular air, so our coffee will stay fresh. So we're finally going to offer K-Cups. That's absolutely fantastic because, as you know, folks, we feature Sterling Coffee on the Monday Morning Mailbag. They make an absolutely awesome coffee. They've had some coffee here for sale, and a lot of people have been picking it up. It's an absolutely fantastic, fantastic brand of coffee. So if you are not here at the Magic Meetup, get online at the website of Sterling. Sterlingsoap.com. Sterlingsoap.com, and where you, there's a link right there where you can get their coffee, you can get their shave soaps. I believe downstairs, Maggard is selling your new iced coffee shave soap. Yes. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm buying, I'm getting that after I'm done talking. <laughs> I'm buying that iced coffee. It came up, uh, it came highly recommended by viewer Bill Murphy, who's been here. We're getting that one for sure. So it's great to be here with Rod and Mandy from Sterling Soap Company here at the Maggard Meetup. Thank you so much. Through the Fire Fine Crafts was also in attendance. Yeah, we were talking about that, that this is our, oh boy. Go ahead. <laughs> we were talking about that this is uh, the 11th year we've been making Maggard soap, so. Wow, good for you. Over in the in the alleyway. Wow. And of course, Peter Wolf of Wolf Whiskers was in attendance with some absolutely gorgeous artisan shave brushes. <laughs> Peter Wolf. Hey, hi. We're talking to Peter Wolf here from Wolf Whiskers. He makes some of the greatest artisan shaving brushes out there. If you didn't get here to the Maggard Meetup, you missed out on some really, really beautiful, beautiful offerings. Beautiful. Look at this one. Oh my gosh, look at that. Why is it still here? That's beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely oh, gorgeous. Man. But look at this one. Look at that. Made just for the event. This is for the Magnum Meetup right here. That's absolutely gorgeous. Wow. Okay. Have a Meet up with Peter Wolf of WolfWhiskers.com. He has some absolutely beautiful shade brushes that were made especially for the Magnum Meetup. So if you were here, you had an opportunity to buy a one-of-a-kind shaving brush by a true artisan of shaving brushes. Peter, well, Peter, thank you so much. And your website is? It's wolfwhiskers.com. Wolfwhiskers.com. Or if you want to reach me directly, you can uh, email me at peter at wolfwhiskers.com. Peter at wolfwhiskers.com. He makes some of the best shaving brushes out there that will definitely up your wet shaving game. And he was here at the Magna Meetup today with some absolutely beautiful, beautiful shaving brushes for sale, a couple of which especially made for the magazine, made absolutely gorgeous.
Peter, thank you so much for being here. Really, really do appreciate it. Absolutely wonderful. Get to the magazine so you can meet great artists like Peter Wolf of Wolf This Month. Timeless Razor was on hand, and we had a chance to catch up with Doug and Jeremiah of Timeless Razor. I'm with Doug and Jeremiah from Timeless Razor, one of the best made razors out there, made in North Wellington, Ohio, Greater Cleveland area. They're here at the Maggard Meetup. Absolutely fantastic razors. Great to see you guys here. Thank you so much for showing up and representing. It's a, they make an absolutely fantastic razor. And you know what? I specifically had a shave with the Timeless Razor TI Slim this morning, and I used the adjustable shave brush handle with a uh, Maggard synthetic knot, and I had an absolutely spectacular, spectacular shave. You guys make absolutely awesome, awesome razor. What's uh, what's new? In, what's new and upcoming from Timeless Razor? Most recent are Slant, which is currently sold out, but we we ran our first run with them. And we've got more in production probably out in the next couple of weeks, but it's been a phenomenal shaver. It's super smooth, but um, yeah, that's our newest product. And then certainly the colors on the brush handles, which we came out with probably six months ago. But yeah, that's that's our newest product. Yeah, I absolutely love their aluminum, their original aluminum razor, which is absolutely fantastic. And the new slant is also made out of aluminum, correct? Correct. correct. Anodized aluminum. Yeah, it's an absolutely fantastic. Now, we had a viewer contact the show that has both the slant and the original aluminum razor, and he loves them both. And the thing is, is that he was saying that uh, either of those razors would be great for beginner wet shavers, that they're both mild and efficient. Oh, and I can sure. attest to that, that aluminum razor, the original aluminum razor is absolutely fantastic. And they both come in at really, really nice price points. They're made right in the state of Ohio, right in the United States of America, and they're just beautiful, precise CNC machine razors. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, thank you. So if you're looking for a razor to start your wet shaving journey, check out Timeless Razors. And you can mix and match razors too, right? Oh, yeah. You can, you can switch up a handle with a particular razor head, but the uh, Titanium TI Slim that I use this morning is absolutely fantastic. I love the aluminum razor, and the bronze razor is also, if you want a, a razor with a little more heft, the bronze razor is phenomenal, and that comes in at a great price point as well. All precisely, precisely made. That's so right. Thanks Thank you. very much to Jeremiah and Doug for coming out to the Magda Mina. Great yeah. to see you guys. Thank Always you. good to see everybody much. out here. Love it. Yes, thank you. We also had a chance to visit with another great artisan razor manufacturer, Chris from Carve Razor Company. Go. Okay, nice. we're here with Chris from Carve Razor here at the Maggard Meetup. He just showed us an absolutely beautiful shaving brush made out of solid brass, the Atha B, and it's named after a mountain in Jasper National Park yep. in Canada, correct? That's correct, Mount yeah. Athabasca. Yes, and it's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful shaving brush along with some beautiful razors that you have. I happen to have the Carb Overlander. That's and it's right. an absolutely beautiful, beautiful shaving instrument. Shaving instrument. It's got a vintage look to it. If you're looking for a great razor that'll last a lifetime, also great for beginner wet shavers, check out the Carb Overlander. And I have one in brass. I think it's brass or is it brown? It's brass. It's brass. It's yep, brass. It's I brass. get the from you. It's brass. It's absolutely fantastic. So check it out. So uh, it's been an absolute delight meeting Chris from Carve from Carb Razors here at the at the Maggard Meetup. Absolutely, you came all the way down from Canada. That's correct, Edmonton, Alberta. We went to Toronto and then drove down. Wow, you drove all the way. Uh, from Toronto. From Toronto, so that's about yeah. a six-hour drive. Give or take, yeah. Yeah, yeah, not too bad. So great to see Chris from Carb Razors here at the Maggard Meetup. If you've never been to the Maggard Meetup. You gotta get here. You were here last year. That's correct. And he's here again this year. You gotta get here. You can get a carb razor when you're here. He has wonderful razors for sale, and he'll tell you all about the razors. Best use, best care, that sort of thing. Makes an absolutely outstanding razor. Chris, thanks so much. Great seeing you. Thank you very much, Mark. Yeah. Absolutely. So this is our Atha B brush. Uh, we make the handles out of solid aluminum. They're turned and then they're anodized. 
got a number of different knots that we can put into them. We can set them at different heights. We can set them as loose knots. So you can buy just the handle if you like. So this is a little brother to that brass brush. Right. These weigh a lot less. Yeah. Uh, but they still have some nice heft to them. They do. And the heft is centered in the bulb. Uh -huh. So they do balance in your hand quite nicely. But they're not so heavy that they'll tip out of your bowl when you're letting it rest there. Very, very nice. So those are available online all the time. Absolutely. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful brush. So this is the aluminum version of the Atha B shaving brush. That's correct. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you, Mark. Dogwood Handcrafts and Southern Witchcrafts also had a nice table set up displaying their wet shaving gear. And we had a chance to have a nice visit with them. But the thing is, is that, is that uh, viewers have told me that your shave soaps are probably the best lathering non-tallow shave soaps on the market. That's what everyone is telling me. And uh, we need to uh, do some reviews of all your shave soaps out there. Uh, when you're doing vegan bases, you're kind of at a big disadvantage, not because of the ingredients so much as the perception of people have expectations when they're using being soap, but it's not going to be as good and whatever. So we, our goal has always been to be as you know competitive as possible with the performance. We want to sneak our vegan formula in with people that don't usually use vegan. Right, right. We've been, yeah. we've been using the same uh, the same base recipe for. I think six or seven years now. We but it's change it because right. we're really happy with it. But it's great stuff. I have used it. I just haven't used it on camera yet, and I'm going to do that. Oh, okay. So yeah. So thank you very much for being here. Great seeing Courtney and Stephen, Stephen from Southern Witchcrafts Dogwood Handcrafts. Great to see you. Here. Thanks again. Chiseled Face Groomatorium was also in attendance. Right. Okay, I'm with Carlos. We're in front of the Chisel Face Groomatorium table. Carlos, you had something to say about one of their shave soaps. Ghost Town Barber, one of the best barber shops out there. Get it. Ghost Trust Town me. Barber, one of the best barber shops since from Chisel Face and the Groomatorium. Yes. Check it out. They were here at the Nagger Meetup, an absolutely awesome table with a lot of their great shave soaps. So check it out right there, the Groomatorium. Endorsed by Carlos, one of the shave migos. <laughs> Check it out, folks. Get to the Maggard Meetup. Didn't get to the Maggard Meetup this year. Put it on your calendar for next yes, year. Yes, for sure. Absolutely. Carlos, thanks very much. No problem. Thank you. And here we have Matt Pisarsik from Rex Supply, Ohio Shaves, Chris from Carve Razor, and the man himself, Brad Maggard of Maggard Razor. Yeah, absolutely fantastic event. Outstanding. Just a fantastic Thank you so much. Brad Magger, Magger Razor. Oh, absolutely so fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so that's much. The best. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, as you can see, that highlight reel was a little longer than I thought it would be. I thought it was only going to be about 10 minutes, but there was a lot going on at the Maggard meetup this year. Now, I didn't include everything, so my apologies to those folks who were recorded on camera that didn't make this highlight reel. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another highlight reel along with some photographs next week. So uh, we'll catch up with everyone at that time. But uh, yeah, it got to be 32 minutes long, something like that, 30, 32 minutes in length, and uh, <laughs> a lot going on. Now, a couple of other things. I had a great conversation with Peter from Ariana and Evans, and I don't know what happened to the footage. Either I didn't turn my camera on and record anything there, or I recorded it and it just didn't come through. I'm not entirely sure. However, I did want to mention that he is launching some new shaving creams. Here's a couple of them right here, 60s Cologne, which is absolutely fantastic, and also uh, the Equestrian, and there are some others that he has also lined up. Absolutely fantastic, fantastic scents. And if you have ever used his Limoncello Shave Cream, this is a very, very similar consistency. So, oh my gosh, <laughs> that's great, 60s Cologne. Uh, very much like a classic Brute. Check it out. 
Uh, these are going to be launching very, very soon on the main site, from what I understand. We'll have all those details for you next week. So my thanks to uh, Peter from Ariana and Evans uh, for uh, sending these along to the channel. Thank you very, very much, Peter. And also, there was another gentleman there named uh, Peter Ogden. Right here, there's his card right there of Aurora Grooming. That's www.auroragrooming.net. He is also an artisan brush maker. So uh, we wanted to include him in the high highlight reel and obviously didn't have enough time. We will talk about uh, his offerings in new wet shaving gear next week. So that's what we want to do. We want to kind of highlight him and showcase him a little bit more. Uh, and uh, show you uh, the conversation we had with him over at the Maggard Meetup. So once again, Peter Ogden at Aurora Grooming. Uh, my apologies to Peter for not being included in the highlight reel this week, but we will talk about him next week in the uh, New Wet Shave Gear segment. And uh, my apologies to the other folks out there that were on camera that didn't make this highlight reel. It was really getting to be quite lengthy, and I wanted to try to trim it, but there was so much good stuff there. So, uh, you know, it was an absolutely fantastic, fantastic event. So I know the show is running a little long this week, but there was so much good stuff and even more good stuff to come next week. So uh, the Maggard Meetup, uh, make plans to attend next year. It's an absolutely fantastic, fantastic event. My thanks to everyone out there for their hospitality, their good wishes, and their kindness. And a big, big thank you to Brad Maggard for putting on an absolutely fantastic, fantastic event. The Maggard Meetup for 2024. Hope to see everyone again next year. Well, what do you know? Coffee's getting low? It doesn't even show. <laughs> Let's go back for a refill. Well, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. I hope you went back for a refill. I sure did. Hey, great to be with you again. As you can see, I got a different shirt on, and this is uh, a different day uh, in shooting the Monday morning mailbag, as promised, but I decided to hang on to the Hofbra House beer stein with some coffee in it, and also we're using the uh, Trader Joe's coffee one more time as well. You know what? I forgot to mention, my understanding is is that the Hofbra House in Cleveland is owned by the same gentleman who owns the Hofbra House in Munich, Germany. That's my understanding. Now, if Christian or Winfried know any more about this, please, guys, email me or comment below and let me know. I heard something about that, that the gentleman who owns the Hofbra House in Munich, Germany, also owns the Hofbra House in Cleveland, Ohio. It might be a franchise or something like that. As I understand it, they also have a Hofbra house in Pittsburgh, and I believe they also have one in Cincinnati. But if you're ever in Cleveland uh, and you're looking for a really good time and great food and great music, you have to check out the Hofbra house uh, right there in Cleveland's theater district. It really is fantastic. I had just a really, really wonderful time. Hang on one minute. <laughs> hmm. Absolutely great cup of coffee with uh, Trader Joe's. And of course, we gave you a little bit of background on that earlier in the show. Well, hey, we got some great refill comments for you. And oh, by the way, we have some storms coming through right now at the time I'm recording this. So if you see any lightning flashes in the background or any thunder or anything like that, well, we just have some, um, got some weather rolling through, some inclement weather rolling through. Hopefully it's already through the area and um, on its way east and away from where we are. But uh, you never know. We might have some storms rolling through. My microphone is just set. My microphone is set directionally. So it shouldn't pick up any of the background ambient noise. But you never know. So I just wanted to give you that. <laughs> just wanted to give you a little heads up on that in case you see some uh, light flashing or something like that. Or you hear some thunder in the background. All right. Let's get to the refill comments here. Al Spencer wrote, Hi, Mark. Another great show. I want to clarify how I got 10 months out of the Tube 2.0. This is the Tube 2.0 right here from Phoenix Shaving. It's the Cube 2.0 in uh, tube uh, in tube form. <laughs> and you can just 
Uh, use it as you would like, say, a deodorant, underarm deodorant dispenser, and just kind of twist the bottom of this, and the product will uh, will raise here at the top, and you can rub that all around your face and work it into a lather, that sort of thing. Anyhow, Al writes, hi, Mark, another great show. I wanted to clarify how I got 10 months out of the tube 2.0. I only shave three times a week and only use it for pre-shave. I usually shave after shower, so my face has been scrubbed. I then apply my bloom water, then tube 2.0. This way, I don't need as much of the uh, tube 2.0. Uh, well, hey, thanks very much for clarifying that, Al. really do appreciate that. And again, uh, we've been talking about how much... How much you can, how much use you can get out of a cube 2.0 or a tube 2.0, and we're being told about 10 months. So it seems to be 10 months, three days a week, five days a week. Mike H was saying he uses his cube 2.0 five days a week. He gets 10 months. So uh, I would think that maybe the tube 2.0. I don't know. I think the product is a little less from the cube. It's not as much product in the tube as in the cube. I'm guessing. I'm not sure. Uh, so, yeah, it kind of makes sense that you're both getting 10 months, uh, a little less here in the Tube 2.0 than in the Cube 2.0. Just a guess on my part, just a hunch. If anyone else knows, <laughs> comment below, let us know. Uh, and also, Al continues here, about pH levels, uh, be interesting to see if there is a difference between tallow and non-tallow soaps. Uh, and of course, we, <laughs> you know, this was, I took the shadow photo from this comment and use it in the eclipse segment. But hey, once more, showing that the shadow from the uh, eclipse. Thanks again, Al, for sending that along. Really, really do appreciate it. Uh, the eclipse day, the eclipse day was really, really fantastic. And my thanks to everyone who sent along photos. Really, really fantastic. Uh, Cheryl Lopez, 4152, writes, Fantastic show, Mark. Thank you for the eclipse pictures and video. What a phenomenal experience that must have been. It was really something. It was really, really amazing. Uh, and I'm so, I'm so glad I experienced it. I really, really am. Uh, it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, your picture and video were absolutely awesome. So was everyone else's who sent theirs in. Well, the majority of great photos really came from the viewers. Really. I mean, they sent in some great, great photos, uh, as you saw today, as a matter of fact, too. Uh, I hope to make it for the next opportunity to experience one, visiting Spain has always been a wish for me to do. So Spain sounds like the ideal place to experience such a magical, remarkable event. Yeah, Spain would be great. And you know what? I would imagine, I know Douglas Smythe recently did a hike uh, through Spain and he was live streaming while he was on this hike. It was really neat. If you saw him on Facebook doing that, that was really neat. So maybe he has plans to go to Spain again during the eclipse. <laughs> that would be interesting. Douglas, if you're watching this, let us know if, you're, if you plan on going back to Spain when the eclipse goes, goes through that, uh, that area. That would be really neat to see. Uh, and uh, I said, you know, I commented back and said, thanks very much for the nice words. And she said, absolutely, Mark. Uh, thanking all those that took the time to send in pictures so people like myself could enjoy the eclipse. Many thanks to all. That's very nice of you to say, Cheryl. Absolutely. It was great seeing all these photos from all the viewers. And my thanks again to everyone for sending them in. Thank you again very, very much. Oh, as long as we're talking about the eclipse, we'll just recap this comment from Dan Blackshire. This is what he mentioned in our eclipse segment earlier. I'll just repeat it again. Great show. I was in the epicenter of where both eclipses happened in Carbondale, Illinois. Right before the total eclipse, we had an eagle fly right over us. And then two other eagles joined in, flying in circles right in front of us. It then went completely dark. Incredible moment. Uh, you know, we, we, I heard a huge cheer from up on the square, as I mentioned, the, uh, up on Chardon Square, two miles away. They had, I mean, they had a lot of people up there at some event where everyone could gather to uh, watch the eclipse there. And when it went into totality, there was this huge cheer that you could hear, you know, two miles away. That was kind of neat. Uh, and uh, I was waiting to uh, uh, listen to uh, uh, nature to see if uh, if any of the peepers were, were, were going to um, 
start sounding and that the birds were chirping. And, you know, you, I've often heard that uh, the uh, nature kind of responds to eclipses. And uh, I really didn't hear much because of all the cheers and all the oohings and ahs from <laughs> myself and others. It was just remarkable. It really was. You just can't help but vocalize when you're looking up and you're seeing this. You're just thinking, you're saying to yourself and you're saying out loud, my gosh, look at that. It really was amazing. Yeah, it really was amazing. Uh, Dan, thanks again for that comment. Really do appreciate it. Uh, Andrew Hill wrote, great show as always for my coffee today. It was also Tim Hortons, but in dark roast. Great coffee. Hey, I'm going to have to look for that next time I go to Costco to see if they handle the dark roast. So thanks for the heads up on that. Really do appreciate it, Andrew. Uh, he continues here. First off, I thought the shave tip about the silicon packs was brilliant. Great idea. Uh, great new item section and hearing all the letters and suggestions from viewers. Again, Great show. Andrew, thank you so much for the kind words. And uh, yeah, the silicon packs uh, shaving tip that we had last week was absolutely fantastic. That's one I've got to write down and remember myself. And whenever I get um, any kind of product that has a silicon gel pack, I'm going to have to take those and maybe put them in a container and put them aside so I know to use them down the road uh, when drying out my razors. If you missed the tip, check out last week's uh, Monday Morning Mailbag viewer shaving tip. It was absolutely fantastic. A really, really good tip. So thanks again, Andrew, for that. Really, really do appreciate it. Uh, James Sefton wrote, Good day, Mark, and another great 3MB as always. James, thank you very much. The picture of the eclipse starting at the beginning of the show was fantastic. Have a great day and the rest of the week. Now, I think he's talking about uh, this picture right here. And I'm going to pull it up uh, in my file here so that I can uh, look at it with you and uh, describe what's going on. This was uh, taken at 3.07 p.m. Now, we went into, to into totality about, I think, 3.14, 3.15, something like that. I think it was 3.14. I can't remember. But this was just as the eclipse was starting. And uh, I didn't have my camera phone set in any way. I just uh, real quickly just grabbed my phone uh, with the camera function on, camera app on, and just, you know, just kind of just set it, just without any glasses on, by the way, just kind of held it up real quickly, snapped a photo, looked at the screen, did not look at the sun, but did it so quickly, I'm amazed that I got it framed up so well like that. That's what is so amazing. Of course, you see that dark rainbow ring around there and the high wispy clouds. So I guess the clouds really kind of add to it. I don't know if that dark rainbow ring would have come out if it were not for the clouds. Just a guess on my part. Now, if you zoom in to the uh, uh, bottom of the, uh, the photo, you, you'll see a little crescent, a little green crescent there. You see that little green crescent there? I'm zooming in on it right now. And uh, as I understand it, that's a mirror image of the eclipse starting. Uh, it's, re it's, it's a reflection off of the lens of my camera. Now, my, my, my camera phone has three lenses on the back here because it's got like a 30 power zoom for photos. And you can zoom in really, really well. And I think what is going on, because I've seen a lot of photos uh, of the eclipse like mine that have this little crescent, this little green crescent here in the photo. And uh, I'm told that that is the eclipse reflecting off of one of these camera lenses, as I understand it. I think that's what's going on. Not entirely sure, but that's kind of the explanation as I understand it. But I think that's kind of a mirror reflection image of the eclipse starting because you can kind of see there in the upper left that's where the moon is coming in to in, in front of the sun and i know that this was taken at 307 p.m according to the information that uh, the photo recorded and um th that's the beginning of the eclipse so i'm pretty sure that's <laughs> that's what's going on there as is my best guess but yeah it was a really 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 neat moment and again i'm so I'm, I'm just so surprised that it got framed up so well like that. So yeah, James, I'm so glad you liked that photo. I, <laughs> I liked it too. It's just an absolutely fantastic, fantastic photo. Um, 
So thanks again, James. Really do appreciate it. Uh, Rod Sloan wrote, uh, Good day, Mark. Great show. Looking at this in Melbourne on Tuesday morning, still Monday in your parts. Looking forward to your Big City Nights review. Hey, uh, Rod, thanks very, very much. The uh, Big City review, Big City Nights review ran this past Wednesday. What a great scent from Hendrix Classics and Company. It really does capture the vibe, uh, the, the, the pulsating energy of the big city. Really, really, ter- really, really terrific. That scent is great for an evening night out. Absolutely. Whether you're going to a restaurant or a show or a ball game or wherever it is you're going, whatever nightlife activity you're taking in, that is a great scent to wear. Absolutely fantastic. And of course, Hendricks Classics and Company has a wonderful, wonderful soap base. I, mean, I used it again the other day. Uh, actually, actually, I used Year of the Dragon the other day. Same soap base. Wow. Just a fantastic, fantastic soap base. So Hendricks Classics and Company, they make some great, great shave soaps. We'll be sure to link uh, Big City Nights below once more. Uh, as well as Hendrix Classics and Company. Really, really terrific, terrific soap base. So if you've never tried them, uh, give them a try. It really is terrific. And Big City Nights is a good one uh, for introducing you to the Hendrix Classics and Company shave soaps. Absolutely fantastic scent. So Rod, thanks again very much for the comment. Uh, Beth Jones wrote, Good Monday morning, Mark. As always, another wonderful Monday morning mailbag. Beth, thank you very much. Looks like Jim from Northfield snagged some really great vintage razors for his razor dead. Yes, he did. And her comment is in regards to last week where Jim was throwing us some great shave gear that he got for his shave den, some vintage shave gear for his shave den. And again, he did it again this week. So yeah, he really knows where to look to get some great, great vintage razors. Uh, Have a great rest of the week. Oh, by the way, Did you get to see what is referred to as the diamond ring effect? That's what happens when the moon moves across the sun. The Bailey's beads disappear and a small bright light occurs on one side of the sun resembling a diamond ring effect. Now, Beth, I was was unaware that this is what it's called. I think I may have seen it without knowing. Uh, but, you know, just in the, the excitement of looking at everything, just looking at it, and then also looking at the horizon and seeing that 360-degree uh, sunset and uh, watching it get dark and shooting some video of it getting darker and then shooting video of it starting to brighten, brighten up. And when it started to brighten up, it was, like a, it was like an LED light. Everything was really, really a white, white light. That was really amazing. And if you saw the video last week, I was... Looking at my hand, I had my camera pointed at my, my hand and arm uh, to kind of kind of capture uh, how white that light was. I don't know if it did it justice, but it was really, really amazing. So in going from the camera and putting my glasses and looking back up at the eclipse ending, I may have seen it, I may not have seen it. Uh, I did not know it was called the diamond ring effect. However... I think that one of the photos that that Dan Blackshire sent, I think this is what you're referring to right here. I think this is the diamond ring effect. That's my guess. I'm thinking that 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 burst of light in the lower right uh, of the the moon there, the moon and the sun there, probably what, at about 4 o'clock, something like that. I think that represents what, a, a diamond rock on a diamond ring? I think that's what you're referring to here. If that's it, I probably did see that, uh, not knowing what it was called. But I think this captures the diamond ring effect. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I'm just looking at it. I'm, think, I'm trying to put two and two together here. And I'm thinking this might be the diamond ring effect that you're referring to, Beth. You know what? Comment below, Beth, and let me know if this is what it is, because it's a great photo regardless. And uh, if anybody else knows... Uh, please comment below, let us know, because I think that's what it is. I think that's, this is what Beth is referring to, the diamond ring effect. I th- <laughs> it was pretty amazing, a, an amazing event. And thanks again to Dan, to, uh, Dan Blackshire for sending along some great, great photos. So yeah, Beth, I think, I think that photo is what you're referring to, and I think I saw it you know, without knowing it. But, but I, I tried to watch... The entire clips for as long as I could, you know, with glasses, obviously, and you could take the glasses off 
to look at totality without any harm to your eyes. But as soon as the moon starts to move away, you got to put the glasses back on. So yeah, it was really, really exciting. So um, it was great. And uh, if I miss seeing it, I think this photo kind of makes up for it. Or I saw it and didn't realize it was a diamond ring effect. Okay. But anyhow, comment below. Let us know if that photo represents the diamond ring effect. Thanks again, Beth. Really, really do appreciate the comment. Uh, 10 fluid ounces, 30 minutes, writes. Uh, the pH, which Nicholas or David, reports are about what one would expect for soaps and shaving creams. Any pH of about 10 or higher would likely indicate the presence of unneutralized alkali. Uh, he goes on to say, which or what was this crema with the pH of 6? Shave soap? Shave cream, pre-shave something, not having the actual bottle and to see the ingredients list, I wonder, pH of six would not be consistent with soap. Someone give a comment or explanation. And uh, David Richland uh, wrote back and said, uh, it's the Cremo Classic Cream in the tube. I have several other Cremo Cream products as well, but didn't test those. I presume they are the same as the Classic. Uh, David also goes on to say, okay, I just tested my Cremo cream for sensitive skin and it came in at a solid 6.0. I also tested the Cremo cooling cream and it came in at about 6.5. I then tested my Lucky Tiger cream, one of my favorites, and it came in at a solid 9. Uh, so evidently, uh, pH is not set on it being a cream. I think that soaps are always going to be a high pH due to the process of making a soap that includes tallow, whereas creams can go either way. Also, the Lucky Tiger is not a tallow-based cream. Well, 10 fluid ounces, 30 minutes. I hope that kind of clarifies it because Dave Richland really gave a great explanation of uh, soaps and creams and their pH levels and really a lot of science behind it. It was in last week's show. If you missed it, Check it out. It really was a great discussion by him. And here he's clarifying uh, a few of the pH levels for Cremo because he talked about Cremo in his original discussion of pH. So gentlemen, thanks very, very much for the details on that. Really, really do appreciate it. Viewer Roderick McLeod wrote about YouTube screen names. Now I have mentioned in the past that I wish YouTube would go back to real names and not these screen names that that are kind of uh, foreign to me in that I don't know who is who because the screen name is so different from the real name at times. When YouTube was displaying real names, I knew who it was. But now that it's a screen name that YouTube sometimes assigns to the user, I don't, I don't know who it is. And it may not be related to their name. Well, Roderick has a workaround. Uh, and he says, uh, Mark, I think I got this fixed. My name should be showing as Roderick G. McLeod with no spaces, no numbers. I sent you an email with instructions if people want to know how to change it. And he did change it. He got a change to at Roderick G. McLeod. And I can see that now uh, in YouTube when he posts a comment. And here's how it's done. Hey, Mark, during your 3MB today, 4-15-24, Yay, tax day. <laughs> After hearing you mention that you wanted YouTube to go back to real names, I decided to see if there's a way to fix it. And the answer is kind of. Everybody needs a unique handle no matter what their name is. I.e., you can have two guys named Mark Zeredi who have YouTube channels, but only one can have the handle that shows up in comments as Mark Zeredi. Uh, no spaces are allowed. You can change to something unique if you want. My handle was at Roderick McLeod 7534 as originally assigned by YouTube. I just switched mine to at Roderick G. McLeod. If people want to change, here's how. And he has the steps right here. Uh, step one, open YouTube. Step two, click on profile picture. Step three, Click on View Your Channel. Step four, click on Customize Channel. Step five, click on Basic Info. Step six, change your handle in the handle box. Letters and numbers only. 
No spaces, no symbols. If it's not unique, it will let you know by changing the box outline from blue to red, and you can try again. Step seven, if you like the new handle, click on publish, voila, you're done. Hey, Roderick, thanks very, very much for that. We'll try to get those instructions and pin them in a unique comment below so that uh, folks can have it right there in front of them so that they know uh, the step-by-step -step without having to refer back to the video. Uh, I'll have to remember to do that after this episode uh, publishes, and I'll do that sometime during the day. I hope to remember that. <laughs> Someone remind me, and I will uh, make sure to pin that comment. So, Roderick, thanks very, very much. Really do appreciate it. Hey, viewer Bill Murphy checked in, and he wrote, Over the last few months, I have picked up three timeless razors. The only one I have that you haven't reviewed is the Aluminum Slant. It is very mild as it has a negative blade exposure, almost too mild, but very comfortable. The Titanium 0.68 is unbelievably comfortable and gives me a great BBS shave. The Aluminum Razor, not the Slant, was a big surprise to me as I prefer the heft of stainless steel. The comfort of the positive blade exposure, fantastically comfortable. I can't get over how great this razor is and at an affordable price. I think I'm going to try to finally get a great two-pass shave with this one. I rate this one second to my overall favorite razor, the Rockwell 6S. Bill, I agree with you 100%. Timeless razor makes some great razors. And the aluminum razor that he's talking about is this one right here. I happen to have this. I've reviewed this. I reviewed this when I was dog sitting. Check out that review. We'll try to link it below. Boy, is this a fantastic razor. Bill, I agree with you. Really terrific. And yes, it delivers such a wonderful, wonderful close shave without having a lot of heft. That's what's so surprising. The aluminum razor is so light, and yet it just does it does a great job in delivering a wonderful, wonderful shave. Absolutely fantastic. Really is. I think it's a 0.5 millimeter blade gap on this. Really, really terrific. And of course, the 0.68 millimeter blade gap you have in your titanium, I have that on a stainless from a Timeless Razor. Boy, this is great. Very smooth, very close, very comfortable, no doubt about it. And of course, the... Uh, the titanium razor that I like to recommend is the TI Slim. This has a 0.5 millimeter blade gap. Titanium, really comfortable, really smooth, an exceptional razor. And of course, one of my favorites comes in at a really nice price point is the Timeless Razor Bronze Razor. It's absolutely fantastic. Now, we originally received the bronze razor head from viewer Alex Lopez. Alex, thank you very, very much. And I went ahead and I bought the handle and the stand from the scratch and dent area that Timeless Razor has. And I don't know, I, I can't see, I can't find anything wrong <laughs> with, with any of the, with the stand or the handle. I mean, if there are any imperfection there, I don't know what it is, but I happen to meet uh, the guy's from uh, Doug and Jeremiah, I think we're there, from Timeless Razor. Doug and Jeremiah were there last year at the Maggard Meetup, and I asked them if they had a, a handle and a stand in bronze for sale there at the meetup, and they said, no, they didn't have anything there. But hey, you know what, Mark? Go up to our scratch and dent area, and you can pick up a really nice handle and a really nice stand at a, at a good price point, knowing that I had gotten the, uh, the, the razor head from a viewer. And that's what I did, and it's absolutely Gorgeous. One of my favorite timeless razors. Again, it comes in at a really nice price point for a bronze razor. Beautifully CNC machined. 0.38 millimeter blade gap, so it's really nice and mild, but very, very nicely efficient. Yeah, they make some great razors, and of course, they're going to be at the Maggard Meetup. So uh, if you are at the Maggard Meetup, check in and see the guys from Timeless Razor. They make an absolutely Beautiful, beautiful razor. Now, Bill continues here again. Uh, let me find his uh, comments. Uh, he says, just to be clear about the aluminum razor, not the slant, was a big surprise to me. Yeah, I agree, Bill. The, the aluminum razor, not the slant, the regular original aluminum razor from Timeless Razor was a big surprise to me too. We'll link that review below where I was dog sitting and I used uh, this razor for one of the shaves that weekend. 
it was very surprising because it's such a great shaver. It really is very, very good. Uh, the comfort of the positive blade exposure, fantastically comfortable. Yeah, so nice he said it twice. I agree, really very, very comfortable. It's a terrific, terrific razor. The slant is very mild and does a fantastic job, but for me, it requires three passes. Great razors and both aluminum razors would be great for beginners and at an affordable price. I agree with you 100% on that, Bill, absolutely. So if you're looking for a great razor to introduce to the traditional wet shave to a new wet shaver out there, check out the Timeless Aluminum Razor or the Slant. Uh, Bill says the Slant is a little milder than the original aluminum razor, but both of them are mild and efficient and very, very comfortable. And again, as uh, Bill says about the original aluminum razor from Timeless Razor, fantastically comfortable. Absolutely. So, Bill, thanks very much for those comments and the rundown on uh, the Timeless Razors. Uh, looking forward to seeing you at the meetup and uh, looking forward to seeing the guys from Timeless Razor at the meetup as well. And again, if you're attending the Maggard meetup, make sure to stop by the Timeless Razor table. Introduce yourself to the guys from Timeless Razor and uh, talk to them about their razors. They make an absolutely fantastic, fantastic razor. So, Bill, thanks very, very much for all the great comments uh, regarding Timeless Razor. Really do appreciate it. And that wraps up another refill segment for this week. My thanks to everyone that contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, I'm dropping in real quick just to make a correction. While editing the Monday Morning Mailbag, I realized that in the previous segment, I should have been speaking in the past tense. You see, this episode is running on Monday, April 22nd, 2024, and the Maggard meetup was Saturday, April 20th, 2024. So it's already happened. When this airs, the Maggard meetup has already happened. So I should have been saying things like, I hope you had a great time at the Maggard meetup. I hope you met a lot of great vendors at the Maggard meetup. I hope you met the guys from Timeless Razor at the Maggard meetup, that sort of thing. But because I'm recording this before the Maggard meetup, well, I guess my anticipation in looking forward to the Maggard meetup was reflected in my discourse, and I apologize. The Maggard meetup has already happened. It was this past Saturday, because today is Monday the 26th, Second, and the meetup was Saturday the 20th. Okay, it's just a timeline problem. <laughs> I got to keep things straight. All right, my apologies, and uh, we'll get on with the show. Okay, let's check out some new wet shaving gear. Well, last week we introduced you to Hendrix Classics and Company's Big City Nights. This week, Mark Bagwell introduces us to Boonda Beard's Hitting the Town shaving soap in a glycerin base. And he writes, let's begin with the scent. It's pure class in a soap container. It instantly made me think of a guy getting ready to take his favorite girl out on a Saturday night, freshly shaved and dressed in his best suit and tie, Shoes shine to a mirror finish, and now all that's left to do is splash on the cologne. And this isn't the cheap cologne from the dime store. This is the Saturday night, I want my honey close to me cologne. And yes, it's that good. The scent strength is a 4 to 4.5 right out of the container, but mellows down to a 2 strength during the shave. One thing I love about Bundabeard soaps is the way the scent gently remains throughout the shave. The top notes are lavender, neroli, and bergamot. The middle notes are pepper and lily of the valley. The base notes are leather, moss, sandalwood, and pacholi. Okay, I can hear some of you now. Okay, we get it. It smells fantastic, but what about the performance? After all, we got to shave with it and not just smell it. Don't worry. Boonda Beard has you covered. Like all Boonda Beard soaps, it has outstanding performance. But this was my first time using their glycerin base. It's slick as their tallow-based soap base, but not quite as much cushion. Although, this still has plenty of cushion. All Boonda Beard soaps love a drink of water, but go a little easier with the glycerin base. 
Think of a racehorse and not a camel. Okay, smells great and performs like a racehorse. Probably costs a bundle, right? Not so. Boone de Beard soaps are very reasonably priced. Hitting the town comes in a 5.6 ounce container and only costs $15. There is also a reasonably priced aftershave balm and splash. Although the splash is currently not being shipped because of shipping restrictions on the alcohol. Hopefully they will overcome that problem before long. Hey, Mark, thanks for a really, really terrific review of Boone Beards hitting the town. It sounds absolutely fantastic, and that scent sounds wonderful. Folks, I have tried and reviewed the uh, Boone Beard shave soaps in their glycerin base. I love their glycerin base. I love it. I absolutely love it, and I think it's probably one of the better glycerin-based shave soaps that I have used out there. It really is terrific. I've also used their tallow-based shave soaps, a wonderful, wonderful tallow-based uh, shave soap. Either the tallow or the glycerin, you can't go wrong. And many of their shave soap scents, many of their shave soaps are offered in both the tallow and the glycerin. So you can uh, kind of choose which one you want or get them both. Absolutely fantastic, fantastic product line of shaving soaps and other shaving products. Really, really terrific. Mark, thanks again for a really, really great review of Boone the Beards hitting the town. Folks, we'll have links below. Speaking of Boone the Beard, we need to remind you again that Philip Sharp of sharpshaver.com is now selling Boone the Beard shaving products. Just get up to sharpshaver.com. That's spelled S H A R P E. S-H-A-V-E-R dot com. And you too can try some of the great Boone the Beard shaving products. They're right up there on his online store at sharpshaver.com, as well as these great 3D printed lathering bowls. These are also available up there. So check these out. These are great and they come in at a great price point. Mark Bagwell also reviewed these last week, I believe. So check out that review. Really, really terrific lathering bowls. So great lathering bowls and Boone de Beard shave products at sharpshaver.com, S-H-A-R-P-E-S-H-A-V-E-R.com, sharpshaver.com for some great lathering bowls and great Boone de Beard shave products. Well, viewer Baba introduces us to a brand new shaving brush a brand new top shelf premium shaving brush from the folks at Smart Helix. Uh, his uh, subject heading in the email reads, Smart Helix has a new brush in stock. Uh, hey Mark, thought you might wanna share with George and your viewers. Smart Helix has a new brush available. It's pricey, $375 US, but it's good to see they have activity on their site. I'll paste below the links for both their website and their YouTube video. Well, thank you very much for that, Baba. Folks, we will provide those links below. So, Baba, thanks again for sending along those links. He continues here. All of the information is on the site, but the YouTube video shows that this brush is a bit unique. You can get it in either left or right-handed configuration, or... If you're ambidextrous and have the funds, <laughs> you could buy one for each hand. Talk about boom, lather. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for all you do, Baba. Hey, Baba, again, thanks very much for the information and the links. Folks, this is the uh, Perrin CSB, which stands for Convertible Shaving Brush. Now, here are the features. Uh, the main handle uh, is either for left-handed or right-handed people. Uh, you can have your choice. You can get a, a handle for, if you're right-handed, you get a handle for being right-handed, or you can get a handle if you're left-handed. A left-handed handle, a right-handed handle, either or. Or as Baba says, if you got the money, you can get both of them, and you're ambidextrous. It also ha it has a removable shaving brush head with the ability to replace the knot. High-quality Manchurian two-band badger hair knot. Uh, traveling handle in short and long versions, functional stand for shaving brush, uh, parts surface care product, and a gift wooden box. How about that? My gosh, uh, absolutely. Again, the main handle for left-handed or right-handed people to choose from, removable shaving brush head with ability to replace the knot, 
high quality Manchurian two band badger hair knot, traveling handle in short and long versions, functional stand for a shaving brush, uh, parts surface care product, and a gift wooden box. $375. We'll link the site below so you can check it out, and we'll also link their uh, YouTube video as well. Baba. Thanks very, very much for the heads up on a premium shave brush that's available and you can kind of customize it if you're a right-handed person or you're a left-handed person. Really, really neat. Baba, thanks again very, very much. Really do appreciate it. Well, we've been talking about coffee during today's show and Bill Murphy sent along this heads up on a new coffee scented shave soap from the folks at Sterling. Bill wrote, uh, Mark, thought you might be interested in the new iced coffee scent. Sounds great. I will be ordering it for myself. Yeah, this is Sterling's new iced coffee scented shave soap. Uh, here's the scent description. Made with a roasted black coffee fragrance with a hint of hazelnut, this soap also packs an icy menthol kick. This is a great unisex scent. Wow. <laughs> Hence, iced coffee. Yeah, that sounds absolutely fabulous. Really, really great. And uh, Bill wrote back after trying it, and he said, Hi, Mark. I actually used the iced coffee this morning for the second time. It's a fantastic scent, and my wife says it's one of her favorite scents that I use. You may want to pick some up at the meetup. If it's there, I am sure you will like it. Well, thanks for the heads up on that, Bill. Definitely going to check out the Sterling table at the Maggard meetup and say hi to uh, Rod and Mandy from Sterling Shave Soap. Uh, and uh, they were there last year, and I had a great, great conversation with them. Really, really terrific, terrific people and great artisans who have done a lot for the wet shaving community. And uh, hopefully they'll have iced coffee there. If they do, I'm definitely going to pick that one up. So, Bill, thanks for the heads up on that. And I will see you there at the meetup. Looking forward to it. And we'll have links below, folks, where you can check out Sterling's new iced coffee shave soap. Bill, thanks again. Really do appreciate it. Well, I recently received an email flyer from the folks at Shave Nation, and one of the products in the flyer caught my eye. This was Noxzema Perfect Shaving Cream because it's being touted as a shaving cream that can be used as a pre-shave, as a shaving cream, and also as a post-shave balm. Now, as they write on their product page, Noxzema Perfect Shaving Cream is ideal before, during, and after shaving, even for the most sensitive skin. The formula is enriched with hyaluronic acid for the regeneration of the skin, vitamin E, with antioxidant properties and allotone, which gives a soothing effect. It contains no silicons or parabens. It's particularly suitable for even the most sensitive skin. They say it's dermatologically tested. And here's what they say about the pre-shaving routine. The perfect shaving cream softens the beard and prepares the skin for a comfortable and flawless shave. Moisten the skin with warm water and distribute the cream over the beard in circular movements without rinsing. Then continue with the application of Noxzema shaving foam or shaving gel. Now, if you want to use it as a shaving cream, here are the instructions that, that they give. The perfect shaving cream can also be used as an alternative to shaving foam or gel, applying a thicker layer of cream directly onto the skin and taking care to rinse the razor frequently with warm water during shaving. Now, I'm assuming that they talk about this thicker lather because it's being built with a brush, but I don't know that 100%. If anyone else out there knows, please comment below if you've used this product. Uh, do you build a lather with the brush, or is this a lather that you're using, uh, you're, that you're building just by uh, working it into your skin with your hands? Or can you do both? I I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure. Now, as a post-shave balm, they write here, post-shave, after shaving, reapply the cream, massaging lightly into the skin to moisturize and tone it, avoiding redness. How about that? $6.99, a really, really nice price point. And as Rodney Ripplinger added, uh, Mark, the razor company also carries this Noxzema product for $6.99. So there you go, folks. Uh, the Noxzema 
perfect shaving cream. Uh, you can use it as a pre-shave, as a shave cream, and a post-shave balm. It looks like it's $6.99 at both Shave Nation and the Razor Company uh, at the time I'm making this video. Uh, and uh, looks like it's got some really great skin food ingredients and will deliver a really, really nice shave. If anyone out there has tried this product, please comment below and let us know. Uh, if you have and you'd like to do a review of it, hey, email me at mondaymailbag at gmail.com and we'll feature your review of this product on the Monday Morning Mailbag, and uh, maybe we'll give it a try ourselves. We'll see. So uh, thanks to Rodney for the uh, heads up on the Razor Company carrying the Noxzema Perfect Shaving Cream product. And also thanks to the folks at Shave Nation for the email flyer, which introduced me to Noxzema Perfect Shaving Cream. We'll have links below. And that wraps up this week's look at new wet shaving gear. My thanks to everyone who contributed Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's check out some of these questions and comments. Well, we've been talking about pre-shave soap this morning, and Tom Donnarumma sent along uh, commentary and thoughts regarding a pre-shave routine. And he writes, Hi, Mark. Just wanted to throw this tip out there to see where it lands. The subject of pre-shave rituals is the fodder of many conversations, and it can sometimes bring up many different opinions. Well, here's my opinion after four decades of shaving, and most of that, wet shaving. I've tried every form of pre-shave out there, oil, cream, soap, and even scrubs. What I have found is that time in and time out, I keep going back to a scrub style pre-shave to have the best combination of protection, cleaning, hydration, and hair lift. After all, the goal is to get the hair to stand up and be at its fullest to have the best chance of being sliced off the closest to the skin it can be, but not go under the surface of the skin. The scrub format usually removes dead skin, which can unnecessarily clog a razor, usually hydrates the hair, and usually has some sort of skin conditioner for glide, but not overdone like oil. All three of these is what gets a good close shave. Oil, by its very nature, clogs not only razors, but pores also. I get the whole slick thing, but isn't that what a good soap is supposed to do? I feel that I have to do more strokes with the razor to get all of the hair if I have oil on my skin. I put creams in that same category, clogging. Finally, there is pre-shave soap. Kind of redundant, don't you think? Soap and then soap again, especially if you just got out of the shower. Anyway, that's my two cents, and I hope it lets some other wet shavers benefit in the confusing world of pre-shaves and maybe give the scrub style pre-shaves a chance. Happy shaving, Tom Donnarumma. Hey Tom, thanks for a great commentary and great thoughts on pre-shave rituals and routines. Really do appreciate it. Now, as far as lifting the hair, when I came back to the traditional wet shave, I was doing face lathering and my understanding was that was the big main benefit of doing a face lather is that that shave brush, when you're building a lather on your face, helps to lift the whisker. Uh, since going to bowl lathering, I'm lifting the whisker, in my opinion, through the pre-shave soap routine of taking that Cube 2.0 pre-shave soap and really working on my face and cleaning my skin. I believe that helps to lift the whisker. There are also some pre-shave oils out there that advertise the fact that they also, when you, when you work them into your skin, that also will lift the whisker. And I have seen that work with some pre-shave oils. Now, I understand the idea of oil clogging the razor and slowing down the shave and that sort of thing. My understanding is, and my, my I guess I can say my experience with pre-shave oils and pre-shave creams is, it's better to do those with a bowl lather than a face lather. That is to say, take an oil and work that into your skin, then bowl lather and paint the lather over the oil. That way you have two uh, 
layers, two two layers laying on top of one another, which increases the which increases the protection. That is, uh, an oil layer and then a lather layer on top of that, uh, adding to the protection and glide. That's always been my understanding, and the same is true with cream. Uh, doing uh, doing a face lather with oil or cream can be kind of counterproductive at times. Not always, but at times you're kind of mixing the oil in with the with the soap. And sometimes some shave soaps and oils don't play well together. So I would say if using a pre-shave oil or pre-shave cream, bowl lather. And again, you can use pre-shave soap as the first layer of protection and then paint on a lather over that too. But I'm interested in what the viewers have to say about that. That's kind of my experience with it. I, I want to try a pre-shave scrub, Tom. I think that's great. We have not reviewed any pre-shave scrubs. As far as I can recall, I'm going to have to check my files again, but I want to uh, review some pre-shave scrubs. So please recommend some pre-shave scrubs so we can get those on the channel and review them and talk about them. I think it's an absolutely fantastic suggestion. And I like the quality of that that hair lift that it has from the scrub, I think that's really, really important. I agree with you 100%. Again, that's why I was doing the face lather with a brush to lift the hair. But a scrub will allow that hair lift and allow me to continue to do a bowl lather. Anyhow, I'll put it to the viewers. What do you say, folks? Scrubs, oils, creams, soaps, what's your pre-shave pre routine? Please comment below. Let us know. And uh, wow, I'm looking forward to a great discussion regarding pre-shave routine and what everyone does, whether it's with a pre-shave soap, pre-shave oil, pre-shave cream, or a pre-shave scrub. Tom, thanks again for a great commentary regarding pre-shave routines. Really, really do appreciate it. Well, we mentioned it earlier in the show, David Kais is introducing us to a brand new wet shaving form out there. And he writes, Mark, I want to let you know how I enjoy your Monday morning show. You do a great job. You really help in the promotion of wet shaving. Well, David, thank you very, very much. But again, all credit to all the viewers out there. They're the ones that pass along some great information, tips and tricks, wet shaving traditions. They are the ones who really, really make this show and this channel. So I will extend your compliments to them because they make the show. Anyhow, uh, David continues here. I wanted to inform you of a great shaving form that I am a part of, the Shaving Cadre. And that can be found at uh, theshavingcadre.com. Now that's spelled T-H-E-S-H-A-V-I-N-G-C-A-D-R-E.com. I just got back from our second meetup in Vegas. There are some great people in this forum. Truly helpful, kind people who know so much about wet shaving. We are trying to get new members. It's a fantastic place for wet shavers. I look forward to meeting you at Maggard's Saturday and also in September at the Ohio meetup. You were so helpful in promoting my wife and I kids cancer drawing last September. Take care, your friend, David Kais. Yeah, we're going to be talking about David's uh, cancer fundraiser uh, in, uh, gosh, a few months here because it's coming up in September. He's going to be sending some information to me. So uh, stay tuned for that. And we'll tell you all about that fundraiser. He did it last year and it was really, really a great fundraiser and it benefited a lot of kids out there. So uh, David, I look forward to receiving that information from you and uh, my pleasure, always happy, always happy to help out any fundraiser that's out there. So thank you very, very much. So there you are folks, uh, David Kais passing along a new wet shaving form that's out there, theshavingcadre.com, theshavingcadre.com. David, thanks again for letting us know about this new wet shaving form. Folks, we'll have the link below. Pay them a visit, join them. I just joined as a matter of fact, looking forward to talking to all the members up there and uh, I hope that they really grow in numbers. So folks, again, we'll have a link below to theshavingcadre.com. David, thanks again very, very much. And that wraps up another Monday morning mailbag. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Please share, please subscribe, please like. Hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Comment below. Let me know. 
Check out all the wonderful artisan soap makers and sellers that you see displayed on the bottom of the screen right now. They make and offer some wonderful artisan shave soap. They also offer some wonderful wet shaving gear to enhance your traditional wet shave. The next time you're online, please take a moment, pay them a visit. I sure would appreciate it. Thank you very much. Also, check out my Amazon product page at amazon.com slash shop slash Mark Zerady, where you'll find all the Amazon listed products that I review in this channel. Organize and categorize so you can find everything in a snap very easily. I'll leave you with this laugh. Hey, we have another double take cartoon puzzle this week. Try to find the differences between the two cartoon panels. If you need more time, just pause the video or try to find all the differences before time runs out. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Make it a great week.